Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 16 to 18 of section 3 of the Orange Booklet. So this is uh, a quite lengthy question about the metabolism of a seal when it's diving. Um, we've got a lot of information, so do read over that first. Um, question 16 says, according to table 1 of the following, most of the seal's oxygen is located in which uh, tissue? So we're given uh, a a table here and I've copied out the relevant part with the different uh, areas in which oxygen is stored. In the lungs we've got 16% of 300 mils um, being uh, oxygen, so that's going to be around 20 mils of oxygen in the lungs. In the blood we've got 25 mils of oxygen every 100 milliliters. We've got four and a half liters, so essentially a quarter of that would be um, oxygen. Um, so in in that then we know that there's going to be just over one litre. If we look at muscle then, it says there's 45 mils per kilogram, so that's going to be um, 90 mils per two kilograms, so that's 270 mils. And then with the tissue water, there's 20 litres of that, but only five millilitres per litre of that, so there's 100 milliliters of oxygen there. So it's the blood that carries most of the cell's oxygen. So number 16 is A. If we look at 17 then, it says of the following, the best explanation as to why the lactic acid levels rise markedly as the seal resurfaces um, is what. So we're looking at figure two here, which is a graph showing the carbon dioxide, oxygen and lactic acid levels. Um, before, during and after a dive. We can see that before the dive they're quite low, then during the dive they're low and then they peak and they go up like this. And this is just the graph for lactic acid. This is during the dive in this period of time here. So why do we have this upswing? Well lactic acid is produced by um, muscles that don't have blood supply or an active blood supply. Um, obviously, whenever you have a normal blood supply to oxygen, you've constantly got some oxygen, or to muscle, you've got some oxygen always being brought and some carbon dioxide always being removed. Um, but if blood flow is reduced, which if you were to read figure one, you can see that to the muscles, such as the psoas muscle, there's a great reduction in the blood flow to those um, muscles. What that means is that there's gonna be less of an oxygen supply and also less carbon dioxide removal. During the dive, this means that there will be less um, oxygen being supplied to these muscles. That will cause an increase in anaerobic respiration, so you get this lactic acid produced. But why is it not that during the dive it just increases then? Well, towards the end of the dive, whenever the seal is resurfacing, the blood supply returns um, to these muscles and that carries with it away all this lactic acid. Um, it's the substance that gives you a cramp if you go running and you're not getting enough blood supply. Um, this lactic acid is only removed um, by the blood supply returning after uh, the dive has begun to end and so that's why you get the upswing at this point where it will be measured. So why is um, the lactic acid level rising so markedly? only as the seal resurfaces, well it's going to be the blood flow resuming to the muscles, carrying the lactic acid away so it can be measured. Meaning the answer for this one is going to be B. Oh, B. Great. If we look at question 18 now, it says, in accounting for a particular change in the blood flow to one or more organs, this is looking at figure one, um, what is the least reasonable explanation for the change. So A says light barely penetrates more than 10 meters below the water surface. So this is going to be referring to the retina. It has a decreased blood supply um, during the dive and that makes sense. If there's less light there's less need for the retina. Um, so that is fairly reasonable I think. B says complex mental processing is required um, during the dive. Well maintaining a fairly good blood supply to the brain is going to be important um, and being able to move and control metabolism and everything else is obviously going to have to be maintained uh, even when diving so that makes sense too. 
So you said lactic acid is toxic to muscle cells. Is that why you get um, a decrease in blood supply to the muscles? I'm not so sure that this is the case. Of course, lactic acid in excess can damage muscle cells. Again, it's the thing that makes you feel a cramp. Um, why would you have a decrease in blood supply then? Because that would um, cause more lactic acid to be produced. So while it's true that lactic acid is toxic to muscle cells, it's not a reasonable explanation for the decrease in blood flow. Um, remember that you're going to be decreasing blood flow to the organs or structures that aren't as essential. Um, so that any oxygen you do have um, in your system is only going to what's absolutely necessary. In this case, it's mostly the brain and the nervous system and the lungs. You know, that's going to be the most important stuff. So the muscles are going to be less important. They're not getting as much um, blood supply. And that's why um, answer C wouldn't be the case. It's not that lactic acid is toxic to muscle cells. That's not why... Um, you get that particular change in blood flow. So that's the least reasonable one. But just to rule it out, let's have a look at option D, uh, which is metabolism slows during the dive. So metabolism, of course, is the rate which oxygen is going to be used up. And it, we are told that it does slow down during the dive. That makes sense. And everything does have a decreased blood supply. Um, but of course, as I said, you have to prioritize where the oxygen is going whenever you have limited oxygen. And of course, metabolism would slow with that. So the least reasonable one would definitely be C. So that was question 16 to 18. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.